I'm Lisa Murkowski. I am a United States Senator from the state of Alaska. I always tell people that I represent everyone in the state of Alaska. In fact, uh, when I speak to students in elementary schools, I love to kind of give them a, a quiz. I say, I'm your senator. What, what does that mean? Who, who, who's my boss? And I get a range of hands shooting up. Oh, the president is your boss. Nope. Oh, the governor is your boss. Nope. Oh, the principal is your boss. And I said, you're getting closer. And then when I tell them, all of you are my bosses, they go wild. And then I kind of lose control of the crowd. But it's a reminder to them that I work for every Alaskan, regardless of how young you are or how old you are. It doesn't make any difference whether you have voted for me, can't vote, or didn't vote for me. It doesn't make any difference, um, really, what your, what your political, f political affiliation is. I work for all Alaskans. This is Article 1, Section 9, in terms of, of where uh, the legislative body rests um, in the three separate but equal branches of government. And I always remind people that they are separate, but they're equal. Because I think oftentimes, particularly in, in the minds of young people, it's the president is on top, and then legislative branch is down below and the judiciary is somewhere down there. But they're all equal. The legislative branch is equal with the judicial branch, is equal with the executive branch. And so the legislative mm -hmm. branch resides in, in Article One. One of the responsibilities as a senator is to, to, to advance legislation through the committee process. And so I am the chairman of, of the Committee on Energy and Natural Resources. I am the chairman on one of the important subcommittees within the appropriations uh, committees, uh, the interior branch. And so part of my day is filled up with committee meetings, not only those that I chair, but those that I, I am a member of, for instance, the Indian Affairs Committee or the Health Education Committee. So attending committee meetings, being part of that collaborative legislation building process is important. But I also need to get my ideas from somewhere. Where do I get those ideas from? I get them from Alaskans. I get them from the people that I work for who come to me and say, we have a problem in my village uh, with regards to, to, to clean water or sanitation. How can you help us? So it is, it is a mix. The legislative day for me or a business day for me is a mix of committee meetings and really working on legislation, but also so many, many constituent meetings where I have an opportunity to hear from Alaskans about their concerns, about their needs, and what it is that we can do to help facilitate that at the federal level. In the Senate, it is really a very old-fashioned process in how we vote. Uh, when a vote is called, we will, uh, we will have the roll read by a clerk, and she will go alphabetically down the list of names of the senators and call each name, and each senator will vote in person by either an aye or a nay. Now, in the House of Representatives, they have electronic voting machines. You, you literally put a card in and you press a button. We don't have any buttons. We don't have any cards. We have a clerk who goes down the roll alphabetically calling the name of each senator. And, and we affirmatively up or down, yay or nay, to the clerk. It's interesting because as she or he uh, checks that off, they do it with a pencil. So for instance, if at the end of the vote, I realize, hmm, Maybe I didn't have all the information that I wanted, and, and I've, I've talked with colleagues and I've got, gained a different perspective. I want to change my vote. Can I change my vote? If the vote hasn't been closed out, I can go back to the clerk and say, I'm switching from an I to an A. And she literally takes the eraser on the end of the pencil and erases it, changes it. That becomes the, the official voting tally.
So we use computers in, in the Senate to make things official at the, at the end of the day with a record. But I think it is one of the traditions of the Senate that it is, it is going down a list of names alphabetically, calling the names and, and an affirmative or a negative action by the, by the respective senator. If there is a tie in the United States Senate, the vice president is the one that breaks the tie. The vice president um, is actually known as the as the as literally that 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 fifty first senator, if you will, that additional senator. Uh, it is one of the official roles of the vice president is to act as the presiding uh, the presiding officer of of the Senate. And in the event of a tie, it will be broken by by the vice president. It's interesting that some significant legislation has been broken by a vice president. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline, which is very important to my state uh, of Alaska, uh, actually came about uh, by a, a, a tie vote that was broken by Vice President Agnew at the time. A lot of people forget things like that. This is a role that is unique to the United States Senate, and that is in the judicial confirmation process. The president is the one who will nominate uh, judicial nominees, put, put these names forward to the Senate. And then it is up to the Senate to review these judicial nominees. And when I say review, it's not just taking a look at their backgrounds, but it's actually to provide, to provide that consent then to the executive that this individual who has been nominated for a lifetime seat on the court has the consent of the legislative branch, has the consent of the Senate. And so this is a, this is a process that, that I certainly take very, very seriously because it is unique to this body. Only the Senate takes up the, the judicial nominations. And so the due diligence that I believe that I have to exercise in understanding, does this individual have the judicial experience and background that is necessary? Uh, does this individual have the temperament necessary to stand uh, in this very important position and, and to maintain this very uh, balance of, of fairness? Uh, can, they, can they evaluate and wait with no bias? Those are important considerations as we look to how we provide uh, the consent. The advice part of it is perhaps a little more um, uh, ambiguous, I guess. Uh, but there is a role for the legislative branch, for those of us in the Senate, to provide good names to, to the White House, to the President, for consideration for selection of judicial nominations. And each of us as senators will do that. We will advance names of individuals from our state for the vacancies uh, on, on the courts to be considered by by the president, and then those names will be vetted, reviewed. Uh, so that, that's the advice part of it, and the consent part, again, is, is what I've outlined in terms of our due diligence and then providing that to the White House. I think it's important that young people know and understand our, our founding documents, the principles upon which our, our nation was founded. And you may think that, well, 250 years ago, a long time ago, how can that be relevant to us today? But when you think about those, those core principles of, of who we are as Americans, and a freedom of association, a freedom of speech, a freedom of, of religious tolerance, these, these basic freedoms that, uh, that were outlined uh, centuries ago, are still relevant to us today. And so understanding them, I think, is important. I think it's also very important to understand and appreciate the role of government at the various levels. And whether it is, it is at your local, your state, or your federal level, to know and understand uh, how our government can be there to assist, uh, to not be the end-all and be-all of, of our, our daily operations, 
um, but to ensure that there are protections uh, for us as individuals and for our families and, and providing for the security of our nation.